what's up what's up what's up ladies and gentlemen and of course everyone in between you know how we do grab your vices chill out sit back relax and let's get straight to it this is episode 13 of straightforward with miss b alongside my guest co-host mr ag what's up ag what's happening tell me something you up in uh you up in uh New York? Oh yeah. You having a great time there? Yeah, I'm just sitting up on the skyscraper on the seventy ninth floor. Well, you sound a little muffled. Can you sit up straight? <laughs> <laughs> I know you on vacation. Yeah, man. Uh huh. Well, I'm so glad we y'all. Y'all having a good time, good time. It's been like raining and stuff here in Atlanta. I know you was telling me offline that um it was it's been raining there too, huh? Yeah, typhoon, baby typhoon. Man. Typhoon. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the wind blow all type of ways and Right. It might take you in the umbrella. I know that's Get right. The umbrella hold up. <laughs> Oh, goodness, goodness. Yeah, I was supposed to be in New York, too, but, you know, I told you last time I went to Texas instead, but I should be going to New York, hopefully uh, within the next month or two. I'll make my way up there. I love New York. I like places like that that's real busy, a lot of shit be going on, you know, the hustle and the bustle. I think I might like it, too. You like it, too? Yeah, so far. Yeah, it's just, it's just so expensive, though. I couldn't imagine where I stayed because this hotel room boy, ain't nothing but a, a matchbox. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> now, ain't much, but it's enough, I guess. Right. A bed and a TV and a bathroom and a microwave and a refrigerator. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, at least you got a roof over your head while you're there. Oh, yeah. And you, you, you know, you right in the city in the heart of it, so. Oh, yeah. They say if you're going to be in New York, I don't care what's the name of the hotel. What it's gonna look like. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be Let's small. That big check. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you right about that. You right about that. But yeah, so we want to get straight to it today since you're on vacation, and I don't want to take up you know too much of your time on vacation. I heard you. <laughs> So today, everybody, <laughs> we're going to talk about a little bit about relationships. Relationships today. I'm a single woman. Um, AG, he's married. How long you been married? Oh, it'll be 16 years tomorrow. That's why we're here. Damn. 16 years. 16. Can I stay with somebody for 16 years? No. <laughs> oh, damn. You <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> You probably don't even want. You probably be satisfied with a man come home. I think I, I, I think I could, but it would have to be with someone that's not clingy. Like I need my space. I'm, you know what I'm saying. Like I'm an only child, so I'm used to kind of just having my own space. And so, as long as they're a person that got their own life and got shit going on outside of me, I think I probably could. I say if he come home three, four times a month. <laughs> a month? <laughs> <laughs> he need to come home more than that, at least three, four times a week. Now, you know, oh. I, got, I mean, I ain't going to say you know, but I got to have sex drive. So he going to have to come home more than three, four times a month. Oh, okay. <laughs> There'll be some. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so the fellas that's out there listening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to give y'all some hints, let y'all in on it. But anyway, so NFL podcaster, um, well, he's been, he's a podcaster, but he is um, an NFL player or retired NFL player, I'm not sure, Channing Crowder. Uh, recently, he was on his podcast, and he talked about, they was talking about relationships, talking about Sierra. And shout out to the beautiful Sierra. She's a singer, for those of you who's not familiar with her. Uh, but she's married to Russell Wilson, as everybody know. Prior to her um, being married to NFL player Russell Wilson, she was dating rapper Future. Now, Future has a stigma about itself, you know, as being a player, as being Mr. Toxic. 
Um, so Channing basically on the podcast, he stated he was asking, well, he wasn't really asking a question, but he was saying that he doesn't think someone like a female like Sierra would have been with Russell Wilson um, unless he, you know, had money. And I think, you know, he went on to kind of say that, you know, Russell Wilson would be one of those guys that women would consider as being a square or, in other words, corny, as some people say. So his opinion kind of sparked this whole debate online, (laughs) on social media, especially on Twitter and Instagram. And, you know, people was like trying to debate on, you know, what is being corny, you know what I'm saying? What is being toxic and, you know, defending Sierra for making a choice that she did by, you know, ended up marrying Russell Wilson. He's more what you call um, a safer choice. You know, he's a, he's a man of, of God and, you know, he's really, he's spiritual and he just, he just seems like an overall great guy. You don't really hear a lot you've never really heard about him being in toxic things. You know what I'm saying? He's never really been out in the news about anything crazy about having like outside babies and, you know, all kind of shit like that. So our question today is what's, what's better, you know, toxicity or (laughs) peace. So from, so from a, a married man, right. Right. What constitutes as peace for you in a relationship or in your marriage? What is peace? When men I always hear men say, I need to find a woman who who brings me peace. What does that mean? Can I start somewhere else? No. <laughs> <laughs> peace. I want to start somewhere else, then we get to that. Okay, what you gonna say? Because the first, why would you even, who would want to be in some toxic? I'm first of all, I'm trying to find out who who is that person for that to even be a choice. Some people like being in toxic relationships. They, they, I don't want to say they thrive off of it, but they enjoy it. It gives them, you know, some sense of excitement, you know? Some people like that rush. I mean, it's kind of like, do you really want to be with somebody where the relationship, there's really no, you know, no art, no arguments? Like, come on now. We're going to at least have to argue a couple of times. That's not toxic. I mean, I'm saying for some people, it could be considered toxic if you always arguing or, you know what I'm saying? Or you, you're with somebody that's um, always cheating, always getting caught cheating. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Right. You know, some people like that. Yeah, because it's a choice they, choice they make to stay with. Them. Exactly. Like for me, per se. Okay. I don't like boring. Like, I'm a Leo. I like excitement. I like adventure. I get bored very quickly. So I don't want to be in a situation where I just feel as though I'm bored. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like to sit around the house too long, except for maybe working and sleeping. Outside of that, I try to at least, you know, go out or whatever. But I don't, I just don't like boring. So for me, you know, I could be petty sometimes. <laughs> I could be talking to a guy and I'll just, I'll just say something crazy. And I know it's going to start an argument. Just so I can <laughs> <You're talking. laughs> right. That's wrong why you feel you speak for your folk. I don't that. I'm toxic. I'm toxic. <laughs> you gonna tell your whole story on this disease. <laughs> hey, I gotta make sure that when that man come along, <laughs> the right one for me, he go he gonna know who he's dealing with. She said it, but she didn't mean it. She was just being right. Toxic. I was just being toxic. I just wanted to start an argument. Do you for... think everybody do that? Cause probably sometimes. Yeah, maybe not everybody, so. but yeah, people do that. Men 90%. do it. Women do it. They do it. Ninety percent. 
Yeah, I would say so too. Cause some you you ever notice you been in an argument with somebody? You know, it don't have to be your current situation, but maybe somebody you talked to in the past or whatever. But <clears throat> you be in an argument, and then after the argument over, you be realizing like, what the hell was we? What was we arguing over? Like it be something that just be so. <laughs> oh yeah. So simple, oh, yeah. like. Like, why are we arguing over dumb shit? Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, who did take the I trash out of, you know, just some craziness like that? <laughs> right. Somebody just was in the mood that day and jumped it off, and the other person just went along with it, too. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's how that be. Exactly. <laughs> so, back. One of y'all could have di- stopped it. <laughs> right. Cut it off. Right. One of y'all could have just picked up the trash and took it out. And that would have, you know, killed the argument. Or, or just didn't participate in the argument. Or just didn't participate, right. Yeah. You right yeah. about that? You just be one of them days when everybody won't be active that day. You picked the right day. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what I was saying is, Russell Wilson, for him to call Russell Wilson a square or corny, I just don't think that was fair for him to do that. Like you said, offline, he don't even know the dude. He probably just looking at him, you know, looking at his appearance and seeing how Russell's name is is never really caught up in any scandals and everything. So he's calling him a square, you know, based on this perception that, you know, he have of him. Who knows? Russell Russell could be at home behind closed doors. Be done. Be done. <laughs> <laughs> you better not say nothing when we go out this door. Right. Beat your ass some more. He could be doing all <laughs> kind of shit, man. <laughs> he could be having like a fucking uh, fake a fake Instagram talking to hoes, you know, in the deal. He could be doing all kind of stuff. She just ain't keeping it low. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. So I don't think it's fair for Channing to just call that man a square. You know, for me, you know, for me, I like my younger years, you know, younger years, I would say, I went through my my period when I like nothing but hood dudes, you know. Hood dudes, drug dealers. That was my thing. I had a little I had a little run there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little run there for a second. But it's like I saw myself too. I like variety as well. Like my high school sweetheart, he was real, real smart. He ended up being an attorney. I I noticed in high school that I like smart guys. Like whether you was a street dude or not, I, you need to have some level of intelligence with you for me. But as I got older, out of college and stuff like that, I'm like, okay, I want to lead a hood dudes alone. Then I ended up, you know, meeting a nice, you know, church going guy, and we ended up being together for like seven years. And shout out okay. to shout out to him. I won't say his I, name. Maybe I'll bring I him on the show one day. Off. I didn't run him off. <laughs> See, why I gotta be the one why I gotta be the one that run people off. See, I'm the night man. You just said how nice he was. He He's just... no listen, I ain't tell you the whole story. <laughs> I ain't tell you the whole story. After about I say like year f- maybe four, round year four, I believe that's when he ended up moving from Atlanta. He moved to Florida uh, for work, and he was there, and that's when shit was just starting to kind of go downhill. Oh, and God. one day, yeah, one, I, I was already kind of like, you know, I'm like, I know this dude down there cheating on me. <laughs> I know he in Florida cheating on me. Detective. And I became a detective, and it's so crazy. I ended up one day sitting at my computer. No, he 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 came to Atlanta once, and I remember him using my computer. 
And so after he left, I guess, went back to Florida and everything, I ended up going on that computer one day. And I'm over there going to the Yahoo. I believe it was Yahoo. And I'm just typing in different passwords. I'm like, I'm going to figure out what his password is to get into his Yahoo email. And I kept doing that and kept doing that. And I'm not going to tell y'all my little trick because I won't give y'all all the tricks of the trade. And don't tell us how long it took. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> uh, it didn't it take me. That's the day. thing. It didn't take me Two long. Days. No, no. It took me It took me less than an hour to get inside of his Yahoo email. And when I got, mm. it, got inside of his Yahoo email, I saw messages. I saw these emails with him talking to someone. I don't know who it is. I ain't go that far to figure out who the girl was. Um, but, yeah, and it, the email, w- the contents of the email is what really pissed me off, and I got so sad. I was so sad. I was so sad. And so I'm like, okay, this nigga down here cheating on me. He telling this girl she he love her. I'm like, what? Mm. And I was, uh-huh. I think that was, that was the. Just tell me this. What? How long it took for you to get to Florida? <laughs> I didn't go to Florida. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't go to Florida. I, I mean, I went to Florida, but I don't think it was after you know, after that little episode. After that little episode, um, when I found the emails, I think this is the first time I ever cried over a guy. I called Tia, mm. and, you know, my best friend Tia, I called her, and I cried. I said, Tia, this motherfucker cheated on me, and I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time and the last time I have ever cried over a guy and then after that, I became so cold. I mean, I was so cold-hearted after that. He came back to Atlanta. I believe at some point he moved back to Atlanta. I mean, yeah, it, it, it was a mess after that. But he, uh, he, he, he's cried over me. He cried over me as well. He threw away. One day he came, and he was jealous of all my sex toys. He threw them in the trash. I'm like, what? Uh. It <laughs> at that point it was toxic. <laughs> <laughs> it was toxic. It was toxic. It was toxic. But you know, we ended up, like I said, ended up ending the relationship. Um, because we tried, we had broke up after I found the emails. Then you know, time will pass. You try to rekindle things. We tried to, and then we just ended up. You know, just cutting it off, uh, for good. But uh, but yeah, but we, you know, we we still friends. Um, uh, we talk from time to time. But um, <laughs> no, it's I'm not always in the situation where it's my fault. I understand. You know, it be the dude fault. Cause I'm a good I'm a good person. I think I'm cool as fuck. I'm down for damn damn near anything. You know what I'm saying? I will ride for you as long as you ride for me. As long as the same energy is being reciprocated to me, hey, I'm down for you. I believe you, B. I'm with you. Team B. Team B. But you never answer my question. Peace. <laughs> right. When men say that, what are, what do y'all mean? That y'all want peace. Y'all want somebody to just sit there and say, yes, baby. I no, got dinner no. for you, baby. You I mean, know. You're not going to never get total peace. That Ain't nobody going to never tell you that. Just, you ain't got nobody hounding you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, stuff like that. Peace is peace. Peace is peace. On some days, it's peace. <laughs> You know, it's not an everyday piece. Man, let let these guys on social media tell it 
They just talking. I think, yeah, they just be talking because they, yeah. they wouldn't want complete peace in a relationship because it's going to be boring. No, I ain't going to never be complete the peace. That's the reason why I really can't Because <laughs> <laughs> I know your situation. <laughs> I know your wife. <laughs> I mean, it be peaceful sometimes, but sometimes it ain't. So right. <laughs> you talk like a total peace. I don't even know what that's it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So to end off this little segment of our discussion, um, I think that it's somebody for everybody in this world, and it's all about finding your person, finding that person that fits you, that fits your lifestyle, that fits your, you know, um, your thoughts and, and the way that you you live your life and, and, you know, just have a lot of things in common. And, you know, even if there are flaws, you know, with both of you guys, both of you guys will still know to, you know, and will be willing to love each other unconditionally. What you think? I, exactly. You, you got somebody who ain't going to, ain't trying to change you, let you live your life the way you living it. And you letting them do the same thing. Y'all just honor one another. Right. You know? Right. Right. So um, we definitely would like to take this time because today um, we had um, an announcement that Katanji, what is her name? Katanji Brown Jackson. She was um, formally appointed as the first black female to the supreme court so how you feel Yay. about that congratulations miss jackson <laughs> you what <laughs> congratulations miss jackson i know and yeah. i don't i don't play the wrong little tune i was trying to play the applause here you go congratulations miss jackson yes and we hope you do everything you said you was going to do and even more Yes, yes, yes. And it's, you know, you know, as much as we, this is a celebratory moment, there are a lot of people, uh, you know, there's some people out there that, you know, voted against her and, uh, which is crazy because she's actually um, probably one of the most qualified. She has more credentials than just about anyone that's already on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So y'all need to put some respect on her name. Oh, you know? Oh, yeah. And that's outside cool. of that, um, we had the Grammys um, this past weekend on Sunday. I didn't, I didn't catch the Grammys. You know, I just usually catch whatever – uh clips nothing nothing major happened shout out to um silk sonic i believe they got a couple of grammys those you can <clears throat> nobody got slapped well, ain't nobody gonna watch <laughs> Uh, Doja Cat and SZA, they won a Grammy for their song. Um, outside of that, like I said, I really paid no attention um, to it. But I did want to point out that during the, you know how they do like the memorial where they uh, kind of show the faces of people that passed away, you know, in the industry. Yeah. Um, they ended up showing um, Virgil. Virgil. And they put hip hop fashion designer and that kind of caused some people to kind of be pissed off at the Grammys for that because he was you know much much more than that for to the fashion world fashion industry he just kind of came in did his thing and he 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 just you know switched the whole game up um so for him to be you know uh working with these major major well-established fashion labels uh Louis Vuitton doing things with them, um, starting off working alongside, you know, Kanye back in the day. Right. Y'all need to put some respect on black people's name, man. These, these shows sometimes, they be trying to, they be pulling it sometimes. Uh, do it be the person that's saying it. What you mean? Are uh, they just reading what the woman wrote for them? This was like a picture that they, 
you know how they put up like the people that oh, passed yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just yeah. a picture, and then they had you know his name, his face, and then they had hip hop fashion designer, and he wasn't just part of the hip hop culture. He he made ways for fashion overall. So it said fashion icon or right. It could have just said fashion icon. icon, fashion designer icon, or something. But you know, just trying to. It just seemed like the hip hop part was kind of limiting his talent. You know what I'm saying? What he brought to the fashion world. They should have left that out. Yeah, they could have left that out. Um, and then let's see here. Um, did you see that mess with Ti and the comedian? And Ti talking his shit again. That clown. Yeah, I seen the clown. What's wrong clown. with Ti? Was he on a perk thirty? He wants some attention. <laughs> Was he they back on that shit? <laughs> That's all that is. What is wrong with a man? And then he, he uh, I'm so glad that the video came out, you know, showing him how he talks to women. Oof. You know what I'm saying? Like, he 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 seriously has some problems there. He he seriously has some problems there. So for those who don't know. Um, T.I. Uh, was had popped up, you know, I guess sitting in the audience of this comedy show, and it was this uh, young black girl, you know, up-and-coming comic. Uh, she was doing her set. Um, I believe she's from Atlanta, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. She was doing her set, and in her set, um, she had a joke about T.I. and Tiny and the alleged uh, sex alleg- sexual allegations that they had come out on them sometime last year. So she did a little comedy set. He done jumped up, called a bitch, you know, cursing the girl <laughs> out, in, you know, from the audience, walking up to the stage. He done grabbed the mic. He's saying his little, you know, one, two, all the big words in the world. Um, he done took over. He done took over the show, basically just kind of wow. degrading her, making her feel small. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just too much, right? So the footage ended up, you know, being posted on social media, it went viral and people start, you know, commenting their own opinions about the situation. They was pissed off at T.I. for talking to her like that. And then um, she got on there. She was she did like a little live. She was telling her side of the story. What happened? She told like T.I. She, she told him he don't need to be sensitive. I mean, it was a it was a topic. The allegations was a topic that came out in the public. So she got free range to kind of use it. You know what I'm saying? She Maybe didn't. Joke. Right. I don't even think she knew that he was there. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, so she was kind of pissed off and everything. And, uh, he got online, got on his live and he was talking and talking. And then he was talking about, I give anybody, I give her a million dollars. If I tell if somebody, uh, said I was uh, calling her out her name. And then next thing you know, a video posted, Showing that he called her a bitch. Clown. <laughs> and then he had to backtrack, you know, backtrack. They ended up getting on the live together the next day. You know, he was apologizing a little bit, but still, you know, he, he half ass apologizing, talking about, you know, you don't really know me. You don't know the, there was no situation with the allegations and that, 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 that. It's nothing to talk about, you know, but I understand it. You know, I'm like, what? What, what did he get a lady up me? No, no. Hell no. <laughs> well, he tried to walk it back, as they call it. Yeah. They call it backpedaling and pussy pop. <laughs> That's what the old school folks say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he do a lot of that, then. <laughs> he do a he lot of that. Keep keep he do a lot of that. You sure do, T.I., man. If he we... ain't on the side. It got to be his own. It's got to, he got to be on the right side. If he on the other side, he going to go left. Right. And, time. Right. And it just be so, it has gotten to the point where, it's, it's really humorous to us. You know what I'm saying? The people on the outside looking in, it's like, because every time he started talking, we already know no matter how many big words you use, sir, 
we can yeah, still see through the bullshit. Big Kappa. That's what I call him, a big Kappa. Big all Kappa. Just, just sound like some cat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody going to believe because you talk too much. <laughs> I think it talk that much, you can't be telling the truth. Can't be. <laughs> can't be. They just, he just, I don't know. Maybe he just be under the impression that all of us is just dumb. And he knows something about every damn thing. What he don't know about. Right. What don't he know about? T.I. is funny to me. I like T.I. though. I mean, as far as like music goes, I don't know him personally, but just his, sometimes his like, mouth, man, it's just be too, it's just too much. It's just too much. I'm good with him. Let yeah, me. Wrap up. Ain't the, ain't the best no more. <laughs> uh, I can't, I, I just can't get into him. So. Yeah. All they can do is cap and get my attention. That's the reason why I told you. I looked at that and didn't even cause it, no cause who he was. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that means you're not going to go see his stand-up? Uh-uh. <laughs> Let my wife want to go. She going to have to want to go. Like, it's me saying I want to go. I ain't going. Oh, yeah, God. No more about right. Yeah. I That's had a... new shit he trying. Hoping that he can get his audience to cross over with him. Right. I had this run in with T.I. one time. So on my first episode, you know, I had talked about Stax Magazine, which used to be an online magazine that, you know, I used to run. And I went to this event one time. Um, this is years ago. I went to an event. Um, it was, I believe, BT Hip Hop Awards weekend. And Yo Gotti and the CMG family, this is when they when he first signed, uh, what's the dude's name? Black Youngster to CMG label. Um, Yo Gotti had like a brunch inside of um, Magic City, Magic City Strip Club. So all the strippers there, you know, dancing, whatever, whatever. And um, the Yo Gotti's uh, PR lady, she had invited me to the event. So I'm there with other people from like the media, right? So, of course, right. you know, we have our cameras. If we want to try to get an interview and stuff like that, we already have our shit ready to go. Um, <clears throat> so, T.I. walks in. He was invited to the event, too, right? So, T.I. walks in. Mind you, he's taking pictures. He's taking pictures with other photographers inside the club, right? Mm. Mind you, strippers in there, and they just got on their little one, two outfits or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's taking pictures. So I was like, okay, <clears throat> I don't want to see her. I, don't, I didn't want to be at the event long, you know? So I'm like, if I can go on to get this, this other picture with T.I., I'll be straight. I had took picture with uh, Trader Truth, Yo Gotti, Black Youngster. Um, I had already interviewed Black Youngster, like maybe like a couple of weeks before that. A one on one interview, and y'all can go on YouTube. I still have those interviews up if y'all want to check them out. But anyway, I'm like, let me get a, t uh, a picture with Ti. I walk up to Ti, and I said, I said, hey, I introduced myself on with Stacks Magazine. You know, they call me Bells. Um, I was like, I wonder if I can, you know, just take a photo from a magazine or whatever. He was like, well, you know. <laughs> he said what? <laughs> he said no. No, basically, in so many words, he said no. Um, he was like, "Well, you know, you know, we inside and he, he we inside the establishment, and you know, and you know, I don't want to taint my." He was saying it like he didn't want to take pictures inside a strip club to taint his image. Because I got, he said something about you know, uh, what do they call like sponsorships and shit like that? I don't want to, you know, ruin my image. Da, da. So he was like, I'd be glad to take a picture with you. You know, once the event over, we can just go outside right in the front, you know, front of the building outside and take the picture. And I was like, I was like, man, I'm from the west side of Atlanta. You ain't going to take no picture from me. <laughs> Did you have to say that? Yeah, I'm just, yeah, because I'm trying to convince him to take the picture, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm from the West Side of Atlanta. You ain't going to take no picture with me. I try to throw him a little charm on my smile. We both just cheesing at each other, basically. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. like, nah, you know, if you could just wait, I'm, I'm going to take a picture with you. You know, you can wait outside. 
I was like, okay. I was like, that's fine, you know. Okay, I got it. I understand. So I left, then I went back to the little table that the media was at, sat down for a while. I sat there for about 30 more minutes. They, CMG and all them, they really went doing nothing. Black youngster throwing money to the strippers, you know. They playing yeah. music and stuff in there. And then I just let, I just got up. And so as I was walking out, getting ready to leave out of Magic City, I walked past T.I., and you know how you look at your peripheral? I could see his eyes just following me. Like, <laughs> I could see his eyes looking at me, walking out the door. I was like, I wonder what he was thinking. Like, damn, the bitch ain't going to wait for me. Like, hell no. In my head, I'm like, I ain't, I'm not finna see him for hours to wait on you take no picture. It ain't that serious. It's really not that serious. Well, that's what you think. He had you. Sitting there, he thought he had you sitting there waiting on him. Right. I'm like, no. I feel I don't know how long this event gonna be going on because they were just really getting started. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even think they had brought brought the food out yet. You know, for the brunch. I'm right. like, I am not sitting in this motherfucker all day. Ti holla. I just walked out, and he, I could see him just looking at me walking out. <laughs> She's a about this shit. I should have, but I'm like, man, this man, I was like, this man crazy. You just sat there and told me no, but yet I see you taking pictures inside the club. You letting the other do it's one, it's like one or two photographers who take pictures at all the clubs, like AG, you know, entertainment parties. He let that particular them dudes take pictures, but he wouldn't let me. I'm like, this little nigga misogynistic. <laughs> <Little nigga. laughs> he's something like he could have let me t- take my little picture but anyway i just wanted to share that ti story fuck you nigga <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> that's ag that's not miss b <laughs> yeah, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> nah, i'm not scared of ti though <laughs> That's get a T.I., but anyway. So, I'm going to let you go and, um, you know, continue your vacation. And we finna wrap this thing on up. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, as we always do. Peace and love. Don't forget, follow us, like, comment, share. We on all social media platforms at str 8 Eight FWD MSB, um, straightforward with Miss B on all streaming platforms as well. So definitely check us out. And if you have any business inquiries, you can hit us up at straightforwardmedia at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs>